just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you do that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else. Have yeah, something absolutely, because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Good evening, citizens of Netlandia, and welcome to O'Reilly Radio number 134, recorded Friday, December 2nd, 2016, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really. I'm your host, Andy Cowan. I have my usual suspects. I've got uh, Fred Sims right beneath me in the video feed. I've got, uh, from top to bottom, I've got Stephen Griffith, Daniel Atherton, and Amber Besegger. Welcome. Welcome all. Uh, tonight, shut up, phone. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be doing something a wee bit different, uh, mostly because I had a really long day and didn't have a, a whole lot of chance to repair things. But also, I've had other things on my mind that I want to share with everyone. Um, first and foremost, though, uh, audience feedback, uh, should you wish to comment on the things that we're talking about or you have things from previous shows that you forgot to maybe mention to us, we do have an email address that you can reach us at Podcast, O-R-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com, or you can phone it in at 470-222-6759. That's O-R-L-Y if you have a road redial phone. I know some of you still do. So... <clears throat> without uh, without further ado, I'm changing things. I know I do that a lot, but in this case, I'm adding more things. Not necessarily to this show, but this is basically kind of a preview of things that will come in 2017, which is right around the corner. And you know, we need to have something to live for in this wonderful world that uh, that Trump is now going to. Um, taint for us. Uh, Trump apocalypse 2017. You, you know, you're just not far off. That's the problem. <laughs> in, in fact, perhaps we could say that you're not wrong. Dangerously, <laughs> dangerously not wrong. It's it's such a catchy title, isn't it? That's right. That's right. We've already, um, we've dropped hints that, uh, that your show was coming. And, uh, and I have Worked uh, worked on it, but you know, with uh, with the changes and now post election and everything, honestly, I, th- I think we just need to we need to redo things. Need, we ought to re- redo what you've already got in the can, probably, um, because you make mention to the Cowan Services Network, which I, I do, am, which I am doing away with. I, I do indeed, and in fact, I just recorded um, the other night, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, oh, should I switch this, or should I still just refer to Cowan Services, because I'm recording when it still exists, as yeah. opposed to know, the change, it'll be released when it's no longer in in, in play, so yeah, it's, it's I had that bit. thought, yeah. and actually, I, it was something I wanted to discuss with you anyway, because you were really the only one that's heard the audio besides myself, and I, I'm not sure if I'm following the direction I want with what my plan for that show is. So I was going to talk with you about it, you know, anyway. So okay, yeah, changing we'll, what I have in the can may may have to happen. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely work more on that uh, deliberately, especially since I'm going to Shanghai you for um, for uh, ReasonCon 3 next year. I'm, I'm going to take you with me whether you like it or not. <clears throat> so that way... No, I, I'll, I like it. Okay, that way we can truly represent the, the show and, uh, and then the network. Um, I would have already actually launched... The new network under the the name that I'm registering, the Random Axe Company, um, LLC. That's going to be the parent company for all things podcast here. Uh, And it will be the umbrella corporation that will uh, hopefully shield us from any legal action. Because, you know, there are things that need to be known. When you put something out on the Internet, you are then traversing all of the state boundaries. And you are then, unfortunately, applicable uh, to be sued in any other state for libel or just all sorts of things. So there are things that need to be considered. And uh, thanks to having a family and things like that, I would like to protect my assets. So if we're going to be sued, I would rather have uh, have a, a fall guy company in the middle. So, and with... Um, with the writing on the wall, with Trump being in office and having 
his um break those libel laws wide open that's his idea yeah and you're very far away again i i know we we either get we're gonna need to work on that yeah so that that may be another thing that we're gonna have to work on is getting you a better mic i know you know actually i could i could send you like a big boom mic you know big you know tripod and everything you know and just actually you know. what i need is just one of the the old timey desk mics that uh, some of the radio guys use. And just Hold yours ha- up. Ha- have it right here. Look, look at Fred's. Um, that one. <laughs> it's a big old condenser mic. The only thing is it requires phantom power to use. So you'd ha- also have to have a board. That's okay. I have just saw a nice little uh, beginner podcaster kit on on Amazon for like 350 bucks. that includes a pretty good mic and stand and everything. I'm going, Jeez, mm, yeah, I might but, have to invest. In yeah, that. but 350 bucks. I think you can do better, actually. Do way, more, it's also more full USB it. powered. Well, I, okay. Well, maybe. It, As a stabilized boom mic. Okay. Well, send me the link. We'll we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But, um, I want your opinion. With um, so I was already getting off uh, off topic. So with uh, with the Random Axe Company, it's going to include multiple podcasts. We've got the Not Wrong Pod, which will be Fred's baby. I've got a couple others in the works. Uh, a movie review podcast called How Bad Could It Be? So some movies are bad, but how how bad could it be? So yes, it's going to be a bad movie review podcast. Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball? <laughs> the live action oh, one? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I could do it. That, that... That's oh, the joy, though, is, is you don't have it's to do every one. Is you know, I'm based off of the response yeah. that we received in, in the initial conversation. I think there will be plenty of people willing to to jump in. So if the movie is just too bad for you to entertain, you know, there might be someone else willing to jump in on that one, and then you just have to you know get back in and trash the next one. Yeah, fair, perfectly reasonable, perfectly reasonable. Um, so that, that yeah, so how bad could it be? We've got then you know the not wrong pod. Uh, I've got one that I'm going to be doing with my daughters, uh, and that's going to be ask your father. Um, so they're going to ask me all sorts of questions, and I'm going to as as keenly answer them um, as truthfully and openly as I possibly can. And you get to watch uh, dad's you squirm. squirm, and uh, well, yeah. And also, if I can't figure out something, it's like, okay, well, let's look it up and and actually go through the process so you get to see me parent on air, uh, which is something that I think some people out there are probably going to like. Um, I know my daughter sure is all going to like it, and, you know, who doesn't want to make your daughters happy? Uh, Like, her first question was, how many YouTube videos do you have? Because she wants to be a YouTube star, obviously, because that's what all the kids want to do these days. Um, So, I, you know, I don't even know how many I have in the can. So I'm going to have to look that up. But it's a lot so far with the show. So that's that's going to be entertaining, especially when, you know, I, I convince them to actually ask me, you know, more fun things like, you know, things about puberty and all that. That that should be interesting to watch me squirm on things like that. So, yay fun, right? And then um, I've got a couple others that I'm going to be working on. One, um, I've got in the works, which I've also already done a little bit of, and that's the independent study. I don't have album art for it yet. Uh, and that's kind of my exploration into just learning and, and expanding my own knowledge base. So today I asked for experts. You know, what are you an expert in? What do you have expertise in? And, you know, let me know so and also that you'd want to actually speak about it. And I would like to interview people on just what is a day in their life of what they do, what is their expertise, you know, do you know certain things that make you an expert, you know, basically the whole, the whole kitten caboodle and have a conversation about something that I don't know anything about or know very little about and would need an expert opinion, guide us through, you know, let's talk about it because there's one thing that I am. I'm a generalist. I am a Renaissance man. I know a lot about a little or a little no, yes, I know a little about a lot. Yeah, that's it. So, w- with that, and 
My phone's just blowing up here, so let me make that stop there. Okay. Uh, so I, I think that that'll be fun because it, it'll just be an exploration into other people's lives. And I don't know what the uh, production schedule is going to be like, but uh, you know, look for it in the feed, and eventually I'll have a uh, a whole iTunes channel and everything. No, I think that com- you know that question in and of itself is a great conversation starter, even if you are not um, in in that show vein just for the responses you get from other people because it really stops to make you think. I looked at it, and for myself alone, I kind of considered, you know, what am I an expert at? And I had that same line of thought that you had. I know a little bit about a lot. I know enough, you know, to get me through, you know, a basic conversation about things. And then the things I don't know, I'm willing to look up. And I do that. I do my research, find the things that I need to, to back up the statements that I'm making. But it's just that, you know, you know... A little bit about a lot, and I've got niches where I know a little bit more, but it's that thing of, like, humility. Do I dare call myself an expert in this particular thing type situation? Right. Yeah, I, I don't I don't necessarily – I wouldn't call myself an expert on any one thing. I, I know a lot that I can go through, but, you know, would I consider myself an expert carpenter? No, I would probably still go to like Norm Abrams, and and even he would probably say that he's not an expert. And then there's you know above and beyond that. So, I mean, if it's carpentry, you got to go Jesus, right? Like, no, no, you you don't go Jesus <laughs> because Jesus was the son of a carpenter and rejected rejected his entire family. He did, in fact, take over the family business. He was a fisherman, a fisher of men. So, I mean, come on. Well, that's not how you make a table. It's totally Jesus not Christ. Way, I know. By the way, in modern well, times, I mean, you it's can. It's a little Ed Dean, but. <laughs> it puts the lotion on the table. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so moving moving along, I imagine we should probably do. Um, and there's uh, there's last one last uh, podcast that is currently in the works and it's it's one that I'm more interested in in doing right now because I have a lot of ideas for it and it will take a lot of planning it's going to at least take a month to to really plan properly and that is Roll Initiative a a an actual play podcast of whatever games role play games that we would like to do um so I have I have the gazebo the iconic gazebo as uh, part of the album art um for those of you that that are you know, already into the role play scene, you know, rolling dice and, and getting into games. Uh, the game master or dungeon master or storyteller, you know, whoever they may be, uh, whatever the moniker they happen to have in whatever game system, whenever you're about to, you know, get down and roll dice and get into a fight, you know, you roll initiative to see who goes first. So that's, in in many cases, just coming back from whatever we're doing or anything, I will just tell them, roll initiative. I won't even say what kind of situation it is, because I just want them to, to scamper and get in, into line real fast. And then you get to see what's going to happen. <laughs> it's like, okay, so last week we were doing what? This, this, and this. Okay, roll initiative. What? <laughs> Gets everybody's attention real quick. Gets right into it. Um. Hit the ground running, kind of thing. So that's all initiative. All right, what are you what are you ordering at the bar? No. <laughs> <laughs> so with you get the um, order first. yeah. So so with that, I mean, we can do a lot of a lot of different fun things. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, Pathfinder, and probably I'm actually just going to run a module for the first. Oh, okay. Just just to get our feet wet, and mostly to play with the format. Because, yeah, we can play. That's fine. That's all well and good. But It's got to be good radio. Can we set it up to actually go out as a podcast? So that's <laughs> that's going to be fun. Um, sure. We'll stream that on Twitch uh, so you get to see us uh, fumble and, and go all through that. But eventually I will um, chop it up into more digestible bits. So it'll be, you know, a few hours here, a few hours there. And we'll just see how it, see how it works out. I want it to be very heavily story driven, uh, with not a whole lot of uh, of the actual rolling of the dice. I do have, um, let's see, I got the demonstration one. Yeah, I got lots of dice, so we can do that. That's, that's not a lot of dice. 
that's uh that's one box. This is my active box. Oh, good. Yeah. And hey, good. for some reason it's not switching back to my normal production. There it goes. Okay. Computer's uh suffering a little lag today. That that is enough dice to get you through a game. It is yes. not necessarily enough dice of the specific type to get through a game of say Shadowrun or <laughs> Exalted. exalted or exalted? I don't have. I actually, I do have a Sion. lot of. I have a lot of d10s, and I do have a lot of d6s. So those those are all possible. It can be done. And you know, worst case scenario, there's always digital dice rollers and things like that. So uh, I know they're not as fun. They're not as fun. They're not they're, random. Well, sometimes they're more random than the player. <laughs> so that, yeah. okay. That I can agree with at times. You have to be in the player. Yeah, yeah. It, it, de- it depends. So uh, that's true. <laughs> how how uh, legit do you want to make it? You know, I'll, I'll take a slight floating point error over somebody rolling that dive a little too many times. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, but mostly, it'll be the honor system. I'm sure. It's all character driven anyway. That's what I'd like it to be. <laughs> and from that, I would like to then you know build it into seasons. So. Season one can be this module of Pathfinder, you know, whatever that happens to be, and then move on to another system. Um, one of you told me that uh, um, Starfinder yeah. was coming out, which is, you know. That, that'll be out in August of 2017. Oh, I thought it was coming out earlier. Okay. They oh, no. No, no, no. August. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Playtesting. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So we have that to look forward to. So we can do Pathfinder in space. Um, And I would like to kind of alternate to, you know, do the the fantasy genre and do a little more futuristic genre. And then, you know, maybe something in between, you know, of course, uh, some Call of Cthulhu, uh, some maybe Wraith the Oblivion, Changeling, Werewolf, Vampire Masquerade. We go for weird, do superhero Um. stuff. There's also Savage World system, which oh, you've yeah. got Deadlands, mm-hmm. which has now come out for it. GURPS. Um, oh, oh god. <laughs> oh, um, ow. Don't, don't forget the glorious party game that is Paranoia. <laughs> Actually, you know, we could also do um, just on like off days. We could probably even record uh, things like Cards Against Humanity. You know, if, yep. we, if we all got together, you know, we could do things like that. Just any game. Uh, there's also Super Fight, which is is hilarious. I don't know that one. See, um, see, this is also an opportunity to really stretch into into different games and really have fun. Yeah. Um, and also, I I would like to then build like a wiki and things like that, so that you know we've got resources that we can go back to and and see whether or not that you know where that character left off, and you know we can build. We can do entire world building scenarios and things like that, and we can have uh, listeners and patrons uh, suggest what to do next, or even what a character should do next. You know, any number of things uh, are all possible. So that that's going to be a lot of fun. I hope. Um, if it's not fun, you know, we shouldn't do it. Hell, we could even possibly get some fan art. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not tied to these. Uh, these graphics here. This is just like album art to get out to iTunes, you know, when I need it. That's all it is. So can certainly do things like that. So I pass it, I pass it on to you, my, my panelists. What do you think of, of these ideas? We, we were chatting a little bit about things um, and just things that are going, going to come from it all. And you know, now you've, you've heard it all again. What do you think? Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, I definitely know that there's a market for a number of things that are coming out. Um, Ask Your Father should be a, a, a delightful experiment in <laughs> online parroting. Um, as for Roll Initiative, which is more within my wheelhouse, um, I, I know there's a market for it because we, we have in voice actors who are now making time out of their schedules to do this online gaming and, and podcast through Geek and Sundry. Yeah. Uh, that, and also you have folks like um, Loading Ray Run 
doing uh, Temple of the Lava Bears <laughs> and putting that online. Temple so. of the Lava Bears. I'm not familiar with Temple of the Lava Bears. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that one. Uh, a homebrew campaign based on 5th edition D&D. Okay. Uh, but they did... Uh, they are putting out a book for it, so that's a module that eventually you and your friends can run. Um, but, yeah, this is something that is is coming about, is get, growing to be more and more in vogue. And so I look forward to it. Uh, as for bad movies, <laughs> there, are, there, there are so many. Of varying grades, there are ones that you can you can actually delight in their awfulness. But some then movies are, are so bad are so bad that they're good, yeah, and become cult classics. Some movies are just bad, yeah. And I would like to basically kind of the concept is find the one star movies, you know, the ones that really did get a horrible horrible review. Oh. And see how bad they are. How bad could it be? Oh, that's that's hard. so minimum minimum Rotten Tomatoes score is twenty percent and lower. <laughs> yes. I wonder oh, where boy. the breed hit. I think it was like a twenty three. Oh, that's far too good for us then. <laughs> too yeah, that, that's my that's my fear. That's, that's my fear <laughs> that we're too good. The breed is too good for us. That's how <laughs> bad it's gotten. <laughs> I love it. That's my fear. I love it. Yeah, this is uh it's it's going to be a little bit of torture. I I I accept this. I accept your challenge. <laughs> starting to And then and that's the thing. More like a, 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 a Japanese torture show. Well, you know, Good news. The breed from 2006 is a 15%. It is not too good for us. Okay, I feel a little bit better. <laughs> Do you really? Uh, that means problems. we have yeah. to watch it. Um, no, no. I, I I, can handle that level of bad. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that is a threshold that I, I can live with. Oh, okay. Okay, well. Uh, that, that's my greed, <clears throat> because if you're worse than the breed, then I don't know if I can sit through it. Well, I won't make you do any particular movie. I, I'm just, However, I, now I now have a fifteen percent threshold. So if it's fifteen or okay. higher, Fif- I fifteen, should be in business. Fifteen percent or higher to, but so I've got a five percent window to get you in. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I we, we will see, but at, le- at least right now, on that basis, yes. The answer is yes. Okay. I have a challenge. That. I have a challenge that I'm going to put out to people. And this is to to all the listeners out there. If you suggest a movie, I may try to get you on to review it. So be prepared to watch said movie and then critique it and tell us exactly how bad it could be. <laughs> okay? And, you know, at, at least one of us, you know, I it will probably be me. What have I done to myself? Um, that we'll watch it and then also, you know, review and then we'll talk about it. Siskel and Ebert style, perhaps. Um, but I'm not showing any clips of these things. Because me. Will it be a, so it's not going to yeah. be a live show. No, 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 no. We watch and then review. <clears throat> well, There's... We on Skype might get together and watch yeah. it without being recorded. Right, right. It's, uh, so it's we can mostly share our own personal revulsion and hatred. Too much liability in there. Um, yeah, there's yeah. there's been uh, unless you you limit everything to public domain films, which that that in itself is its own twisted delight. Yeah, and even then, some things go in and out of even public domain because of legal issues. So that that is an an area that I don't wish to tread. Um, fair, that's fair. Because I just I don't want I don't want to threaten the channel being taken down because of you know some dispute. Yeah. Uh, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act just <coughs> went through starting this month a new chapter of horror, basically. So it's uh, it's worse now. Yeah. So Yay. we're just going to avoid that, and that's another reason why I'm going to go ahead and incorporate so that way we can you know. 
kind of stave things off a little bit. Uh, you know, I've, I've got some sources for good entertainment lawyers and things like that. So we'll, um, if need be, I'll fight it. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> Please donate. Patreon.com Please. slash Overly Radio. Um, <laughs> eventually, I'll also get different different Patreon um, accounts as well, and, and we'll, we'll work on that. But we'll see. We'll see how it all works out. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm delightfully optimistic about the whole thing. I also don't know about the production schedule and the release schedule for any of these. These are all uh, very much works in progress. Um, I would like to have a few already produced and in the can before releasing them. Uh, there is an opportunity to have on Patreon a specific RSS feed for patrons. So if you donate, you get your own RSS feed, which is outside of iTunes. So even if it never goes there, you'll still have access to the show as soon as they're posted. Um, that would be for, for patrons only. And then I, I think I have to have like five already before iTunes will allow it to go through. You know, I don't remember exactly what I had to do 134 episodes ago <clears throat> to get this show up and running, but I'll have to do all that again. And then once all those are in, then I will, I will plead with Apple, please give me my own channel, my own network, so that way I can put all of my shows under one roof, please, please. Uh, because that's essentially how you have to do it. You have to put them all out there, and then you have to say, I've got this one, this one, and this one. Please give me my own channel. Via email. So you actually have to talk to somebody. It's kind of weird. But hey, yeah. that's that's where everything is. Um, so it'll be it'll be a growth process and and watch out, you know, on the on the website. Everything's pretty much gonna be still under O'Reilly Radio. Um, but I will have different um, different URLs and they will point to the specific uh, specific location on the website. Uh, they'll forward into their like not wrong dot x y z. Almost all of these have x y z as their um, yeah. In fact, all of them have x y z as their uh, their top level domain, their TLD. So ask your father dot x y z. How h b c i b? How bad could it be? Dot x y z. Uh, not wrong dot x y z. And roll initiative dot x y z, so all those uh, are going to be ready for you. And I'm still working out uh, what to do about um, <clears throat> independent study. Yeah, because I'm still that's still a, a, another work in progress. So I've got a lot of irons in the fire for what to do, but there will be great growth on the network, and I hope that uh, that anybody that is out there as a listener and and a patron and likes what we do is going to like all this even more and, and get us, get out there and, you know, leave us some, leave us some reviews, get us out in front of more people. That, that is what would help us the most out of everything. Amber, what do you think? You haven't, uh, you haven't spoken up too much. Um, I mean, I, as you know, I'm really interested in the role initiative, um, podcast, but I'm also interested in the terrible movies. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, I think that sounds like a good time. Excellent. I mean, I think it's mostly going to be screaming, like, geometrically, but... Ge geometric screaming? Yes. Uh, we haven't said Trail of Cthulhu yet. You just but did, though. Should. You just did, <laughs> actually. You just said it. One of the terrible incarnations of Mountains of Madness, perhaps. There have been many. That is that is best used as a radio play. Um... See here. I'm just trying to remember of all the terrible Lovecraft movies I've seen. There have been many. <laughs> there was a sci-fi one because when you're talking about terrible movies, the Sci-Fi Channel can't be counted out. No, no, that that's its own channel. We we can do nothing but just sci-fi original <laughs> pictures. Oh, um. However, I I will draw a line. There are oh. some movies that I cannot stomach. Most oh, of them are uh, shown on Lifetime. <laughs> the burning bed. The anything that's on the Hallmark Actually, channel has a really here. good chance of never making it to me ever. There, because it will burst yeah. into flames before it comes near me. 
could be because I'm building a flamethrower. That could that be it. Sounds like a science experiment. Maybe. Because that would be on independent study. Okay. <laughs> that, that's that's what that channel is for. There'll be um, crossover oh, wait, episodes. Wait. Oh yeah. You're building a flamethrower? <laughs> sure. I think we found a missionary for Rogue Trader. I think I have Fur- a flamethrower. Purge the unclean. Close. Anyway. <laughs> I oh uh actually for that I do have Fire Guard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fire protection for clothing, draperies, carpets, wall covering, and furniture. Flame retardant. Good stuff. I believe that's uh, that, that's heresy. It's actually called force field. Right there, yeah. That's Xenotech right there. It's spray on. Spray on force field. <laughs> How about that? Interesting. So, I, I thought that was maybe important for things that I do. Just to have that around. <laughs> Make sure that things are... Yeah, a little more fireproof. Like myself, I would like to be a little more fireproof. So, um, so those were my ideas for podcasts, and of course, the uh, not wrong pod for Fred. So, Fred has one. Guys, what do you want to do? If you could do any podcast, and I'm not saying that you have to. I'm not committing anybody to doing anything, but this is just kind of putting it out there. What what would you do? Oh. Uh, again, I'd probably do, you know, roll initiatives right up my alley. Um, again, trying out uh, new systems, new games, new characters, um, introducing people to maybe some tabletop games they haven't heard or seen of before, new systems, new rules, that sort of thing. I'm, I'm all about that. Um, especially now, since we're going to it, it it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to. We're going to have an entirely new world of darkness following on this <laughs> soon. <laughs> um, yeah, but there aren't any rules for that one. <laughs> figuratively and literally. Um, and so, going back through the old world of darkness games, which you can all find on Drive Through RPG, mm-hmm. and just going, okay, this is what it used to be. Yeah. This was what the old meta plot was. We've already seen with uh, the anniversary editions through Onyx Path um, some of the changes to that meta. But uh, one of the things that we, we've gotten from White Wolf Reborn mm-hmm. um, is the reason everything's taking so much time is they're building a new Bible. Uh, the The, the the entire world Bible is being built as we speak, and that is what's delaying everything because it's all going to be one giant crossover venue. Oh, thank you. Good. That's tied tied to one meta. Um, so okay. that way they can not only implement games based on this, not just the pen and paper, but also we're probably going to get at least one, if not three video games in the next seven years, and if they haven't gotten at least one Netflix seri- series out, they've said they failed. Interesting. Um, that That's their belief. If they don't have a, at least a Netflix series in the next uh, seven years, they've mm-hmm. failed, in their opinion. Hmm. So, For um, those of you that are lost, White Wolf is a publishing company, uh, similar to Wizards of the Coast or the old TSR. Uh, those were the publishing companies for the big game houses. There's there's a lot of them, um, so we'll be we'll be discussing them fairly uh, in depth with uh, with that game. I, I mean, Green Roll Ronin's back. We all yeah. thought they were dead. They're back. Uh, AEG yeah. has reinvented itself as a board game company, but oh, yeah, they yeah. they still hold some old titles. Uh, I don't know who owns Mongoose's old catalog. Did Mongoose uh, completely go away? Because I, I have a lot of Mongoose stuff. I mean, their rules were typically very broken. You yeah. know, not not oh, very oh, uh, play Oh, delightfully or broken in some yeah. places, but yeah, uh, some in others it was great. just a mess. Yeah. But that that's that's all up my alley because again, I if I I counted the the time that I've spent doing pen and paper, uh, that's that's years of my life now. Um. So that that's precisely up my alley. Excellent. 
Stephen, what do you think? Again, I there. I've got ideas kicking around in the back of my head, but a lot of them are. I need to work on them before I come up with the idea of actually running a podcast. There are several that I would like to do. Okay. Um, what what genre? I mean, again, obviously, this is kind of a talk kind of format. Obviously, so you're going to be talking about something. True. Uh, I go, you know, do some things about uh, cultural exploration. You know, well, let's look at the culture of a country or something else and talk about some interesting things about them, things you might not know, things you do know. Mm. Explain why those are the way they are. Um, I do also have a love of medieval weapons and weaponry. There are several places out there that already do it, but I wouldn't mind adding my own voice to to that or combat techniques, uh, martial arts. Um, also, as you know, Andy, I also have a love of, of certain books and book series and everything else. So we do like almost a Book of the Month Club. Like, oh, here's this book we're reading this we month. Could do that. And then the at the month, here we go. Well, here's the book. Here's what we read. Here's our opinions of it. We <clears throat> we probably should do a book club. Can we do like a drunk book of the month club? I'm totally up for that. Oh, well, you've just taken it to a whole other level. Okay. Well, I think we need <laughs> to talk okay about this. We need to talk about this one. We need to flesh this one out. How are we gonna <laughs> get the books drunk? <laughs> Well, you Carefully. Just pour it over, that, that's you know? not that hard. It's <laughs> just the application of liquid to paper. I'm assuming well, first, every book we read will be Hemingway. <laughs> first, it starts with Andy's learning channel, where he teaches everybody how to get their books drunk, and then we move. <laughs> I you crossover episodes. Well, yeah, exactly. Just, well, you have to be the be the book. You have to be the book, and then you have to drink yourself. That's that's how you do. It. Yeah, it's it's. Ooh. There, very, there, very there's some filters that you need to use in order for that to happen. At least <laughs> make it sanitary. <laughs> well, it also wouldn't be good on library books. So no, you yeah. don't do those lenders. No, 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 and, you can't. They're very lenders. difficult for eBooks, but not impossible. And I think that some of the Kindles are actually waterproof. So that is another level of of a uh, problem there. So you may just have to imbibe yourself. May just be the only way to do it. Oh, so, shucks. Uh, yeah, oh, oh well, shucks. We can actually have a rating for books and have it be the inverse of the star system. How many drinks does it take to enjoy this book? Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. See? You know, that's kind of brilliant. You're so it, smart. It's so pretty so smart. Kind of leads itself too much to the terrible movie podcast then. Because then it seems like you're reading books that are so bad you need to be hammered to read them. Yeah. No, no, no. Having a score of zero is amazing. Um, like, I know there uh, are yeah. some books that I, I, I take the light in that I would still say is a one drink minimum. Uh, Mr. Be Gone is probably the best example I can say of a, a one drink minimum book. Um, cause I, I do love me some horror and that one, in order to really get into it and aid your suspension of disbelief, you need at least one drink. Mm. Um, there, there are there are other books that no, I I can I can sit down with the Hound of the Baskervilles and be perfectly fine. But for some of the other Arthur Conan Doyle stuff, there, it could be a three drink minimum. Um, <laughs> could be, could be, yeah. To to truly, well, you got to get in the zone. With some of the books, um, a lot of the books, and, and based on based on my own uh, particular reading habit, um, I I really don't pick up, you know, though I have a copious amount of paper paper books here, um, I you know the, the dead trees sometimes they they don't I don't have time for dead trees, I have time for people to read them to me, so mm-hmm. I'm pretty much only doing audio books. Uh, also, the fact that Let's see. In my twelve-hour day today, I was on the road for eight of those hours. Um, wow. I get a lot of listening done, so I can I can pound through on on any given week. I could go through three books. I can occasionally tell you how many drinks it takes me to write a book. <laughs> o- occasionally, occasionally, like once it goes past a number, it's the uh, bottle. She only remembers the previous day's writing. That's it's not. That's why it's occasionally. I bet it makes the proofreading really interesting. It's like, wow, I wrote that. Oh no, no. So you write drunk, edit sober, right? Like Hemingway yeah. said. 
Yes, right drunk, head it sober. It's like, whoa, where did that come from? I was brilliant. <laughs> what did I what did I drink last night? I have to have for another one. Of those. Tolls. <laughs> um it, it tolls two drinks. Um <laughs> Nice. Again, they, 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 I, we can go through the classics. I mean, okay, how many drinks did it take you to get through Anna Green Gables? Um, oh God! You know, you know <laughs> see, you alcohol poisoning. That, I that's that's a thing. But you also have, you know, there are also good books out there that, because of just how long the exposition is. Okay, I that's I, a drink. I gotta, I gotta ask. I gotta ask. Okay. Pride and Prejudice. What do you think? The original Pride and Prejudice. No, no zombies. Original Pride and Prejudice. That's a two and a half drink. Two and a half. Drink. Add, add, two out and a half drinks, and at least out of how one, many? Like <laughs> coffee. Out of I, how many? Again, <laughs> I use a five scale. So F- oh, a five, five, five drink scale. Mm. It's 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 two and a half drinks. What proof? And it, you know what? I I think. Um, how many normal Oof. how many normal shots can we get out of a 750 milliliter bottle? I mean, I'm going to need something harder than alcohol if we're going to do Pride and Prejudice. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, uh, I ask again because when my um, drinks are about yay big though. Uh, that's I, not a I shot. Do, <laughs> I do cocktails. I don't. I don't do shots. Well, yeah, but you it's, have to put you have to put shots in the cocktails. That's okay, how you make well, the cocktail. <laughs> well, then it's usually about three to four shots. Okay. And so you're talking, that's the drink? Yeah. So you're already into, like, nine shots. Nine, ten shots. So, yeah. Because remember, it's alcohol by volume. I mean, you know, you know percentages here we're going. So oh, Okay, but that... Because that one shot scale, equals, what, two, two glasses of wine equals three beers? Up, up, up. Roughly, right? yeah, something like that. I'm, I'm sure it's something like that. I, I can't remember now. Uh, maybe how many bottles of wine will this book take? How many bottles? Uh, yes. Well, that's why it's like okay. So how many shots are in a you know a 750 milliliter you know your standard size bottle? You know, then then we could figure out you know how many bottles did it take to get through this book? <laughs> one 12 ounce beer has as much alcohol as a 1.5 ounce shot of whiskey or a five ounce glass of wine. There you go. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll figure out the drinking scale for the ratings, um, because why not? But that's uh, great. Okay. That's that's uh, a great thing. I, I asked about Pride and Prejudice uh, because it's my it's one of my girlfriend's favorite books, and when I met her on you know OK Cupid. It was in her profile. So actually, that was the icebreaker for how I got her to talk to me, was I said, Pride and Prejudice, really? <laughs> so basically, I insulted one of her favorite books, and that got the conversation started. So uh, nagging. It, it worked. <laughs> zombies couldn't even save that piece of shit. <laughs> no, zombies did save that. It, it no, worked. it did not. <laughs> nah. It, it, it brought it down to one beverage. Ah, uh, two drink minimum. Two drink minimum. That's all okay. there is to it. In fact, maybe that should be the, the title of the podcast. Two drink minimum? Two drink minimum. Okay. <laughs> Though that would well, work for nearly anything. we are a lot anything. funnier and more entertaining after two drinks. I will say that. Yeah, an, an, adult, uh, an adult book review. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Not adult book review. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I go with that one? Well, a long adult. time ago... <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> a, a long dot, time ago, long. about a year ago, yeah. when I started doing this show, um, one of the first things I was going to bring on as a pick was the fact that I had found this author. And the reason I had found the author is because my best friend um, shared it with me because either her pen name or her actual name was Sims. Same, same spelling and everything. So he was giving me crap because what she wrote was – Dinosaur erotica. What? Dinosaur I've erotica. Heard about this. Yeah. Do you yep. know how well that bullshit sold? <laughs> like, yeah. like crazy well. Yeah, I do. She had a ton of books, and like oh the God. covers were amazing. The titles were fantastic. I was going to share this on the show, and then I was like, you know what? I've only been on here like twice. Maybe I don't release the Kraken on them this early. <laughs> 
that's what happens when you have a five drink minimum book that is release the Kraken. Well, well, of course we have to remember there's also Chuck Tingle. Oh, you know, I actually, I, I, I know Chuck Tingle, and but, he's wonderful. I'm yeah, but awesome. I'm, I'm just uh, impressed that he has, he does a whole series of adult theme erotica books that all end with somewhere doing it in the butt. Mm-hmm. And he has like hundreds, it seems, of titles, mm-hmm. and they sell decently well. I'm going. Well, crap. <laughs> and he puts one out like, like I think Trump won the election and he had one like a day or two later. Yep, he he easily makes five figures a month. Easily. Wow. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> I, yeah. I just, I don't think that I could uh, uh, shit out shit like that on a regular basis. That would be very difficult. Just know what but, one of the names of here. I suppose Space they're Raptor Butt Trilogy. They're they're pretty well formula though, aren't yeah, they? As I say, you got you you would have a, a template kind of you yeah. Know. It, it's it's sort of like just writing a season of House. They're they're very formulaic because that's pretty much the only way that you could produce that level. I don't know, Amber. How do you write? Well, obviously with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I'm not typically writing uh, Chuck Tingle level work. <laughs> but... Well, you can always aspire. I was going to say, is that, is that a shot yeah. or is that an aspiration? Which... <laughs> oh, maybe maybe both. It's, yeah, it's a little of both. Um, <laughs> aspiration on the five figures, yeah. shot on the content? There you go. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, there you go. The shot of figures. aspiration. Are you kidding me? You know, to be honest, I did for a while, uh, quite a while write just short smut and publish on Amazon and I made uh, a pretty damn good living back before they instituted this new uh, and terrible program that pays you by pages read um, so yeah. it like tracks somebody's Kindle activity and you only get paid uh, a little less than half a penny per page that the reader actually reads Ugh. so and, short uh... form work but it, unless you've got a name like Chuck Tingle um Short form work doesn't really work anymore. Um, you've got to go long form. You've got to do novels. Um, and that's about the time that everybody made the switch was, uh, uh, I think it was two years ago that they, or no, I'm sorry. The, the pages read was, uh, one year ago. Yeah. I, re- I seem to remember, uh, something about that. Mm-hmm. So that, that's with their Kindle Unlimited program, right? Correct. Yeah. Where you and can so, like, read if you're a you reader want. and you enroll in that program, <clears throat> you get, uh, books, for essentially well it's not free it's ten dollars a month for as many kindle unlimited books as you can read so it's like a good deal if the authors that you like are in kindle unlimited and if you go through books like crazy that's Mm -hmm. a that's a fantastic deal for you but for authors um unless you've got the name backing you you're kind of screwed yeah i could see that geez my page is red okay Yeah, yeah it's not cool it's I've I've equated it before to like you order a burger at a restaurant and you don't finish it and then you only pay for the portion of the burger that you ate, which is silly Bikes because so, yeah, because somebody still put the effort in and you still use the resources to make an entire burger. Like mm-hmm. nobody nobody does things like that. It's insane. Yeah, but it's Amazon, so how can we screw you today? Mm, yes. Yep, pretty much. Well, yeah, well they're they're screwing one person, but they're doing, you know, in theory, a service to those that that enjoy it. It's and, like and, iTunes, and at How the can same time, the artists as much as possible, right? Well, at the same time, okay. you're not. The, it, it's it's the buffet option. You know, the the restaurant okay. is offering the buffet, and they're counting on you not gorging yourself. Well, the thing is, is that like it, Amazon's a very um, customer and consumer oriented company mm-hmm. um, to the point where they have before operated at a loss specifically to appease customers and get their, the reputation that they, that they have. Yeah. Um, unfortunately it comes at the cost of the people who are producing the content. Um, it's devaluing the content and not only that, but it encourages 
you know, I, I know a lot of authors um, because I, you know, I am an author and um, writing communally, I think is a very important thing. And I have watched just in the past six months alone, people who were making an extremely decent living, um, probably again in the, the four to five figures a month, um, who would publish like, and it's still a crazy schedule, you know, one novel a month or one novel every two to three months. Um, I've watched them go from trying from that to, to trying to bang out two to three novels a month, just the same uh, to make the same amount of money. Um, and some have even had to go back to day jobs because they can no longer, you know, sustain themselves. Wow. And now this is mostly through all self-publishing? What, or is there a publishing right. house that's also, you know, equally screwing people as well, you know, in the same I mean, traditional publishing has its own problems. <laughs> um, one of them is the extremely low advance, or I'm sorry, um, well, advances too, but the extremely low royalty rates are the even bigger problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why a lot of people had moved to Amazon's uh, Kindle Direct Publishing, the self-publishing aspect of it, because you controlled, for better or worse, um, start to finish what the cover looked like, what the content of the book was, who your editor was, um, and you were getting 70% uh, royalties from every sale that you made. Um, as long as you were pricing above 99 cents, um, that has changed. I mean, you can still, um, do direct sales where you get 70% of the, the royalties that those books make. But unfortunately, because of the way that their algorithms work, they push to the top anything that's in Kindle Unlimited or anything that is published through Amazon's publishing imprints. Right. And, um, if you aren't enrolled in Kindle Unlimited, you are going to have a really, really hard time pulling in sales. So they, so, they hamper the, the discovery method at that Correct. Point, and so. it, it's, you, you end up in between a rock and a hard mm-hmm. place of, you know, you're not making the money that you should be making, the money that you deserve to make. But if you take yourself out of the program, you're going to make even less. So even it's like now, the record industry. But even though you're in that program, even though mm-hmm. you're in the Kindle Unlimited program, someone can still buy your book outright. Yes, they can. So that it doesn't preclude that from being being a, a revenue option. It doesn't, but the Kindle Unlimited program has become so popular that everybody across the board has seen um, in some cases a ninety percent drop in sales. Oh wow. And I mean, we have the facts and figures. We've done the Excel spreadsheets. We've compared yeah. data across genres and everything else. It's it's insane. And it was something that I actually uh, soapbox for a second. Two years ago, when the program first rolled out, I warned everybody against this um, because at the time it wasn't pages read, but it was uh, like a borrow system, which is silly because it operated the exact same way as a sale, only we got paid less. Um and I said it was unethical, it was going to devalue work, it was going to cause, pe- eventually Amazon was going to find a way to pay you the least amount possible um, to justify ru- um, having run at a loss for a few months there. Mm-hmm. And everybody pretty much said, no, that'll never happen, they'll never do that, Amazon you know, takes care of us, they care about our indie authors, no they fucking don't, they're a corporation just like anybody else, mm-hmm. I don't know why people operated under this delusion. Yeah, they did the but, same thing with app with uh, app creators too. Yeah, be- because they've got they that app this, store and everything. They did this for a year, and um, over the year, we had we saw um, increasingly diminishing rates of pay um, per borrow. And then after a year, they said, "Oh, we're going to pay you per page." Um, and everybody was like, "Oh, okay. Well, you know, that's that's I guess okay uh, in some." universe but then they said no 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 only the pages that the readers actually read however and the original uh example that they gave us in an email was 10 cents per page read which would have been quite a lot of money um assuming somebody read uh, the average read through rate of a book is 65 percent. so assuming that they did that you would you would still be making pretty good money um what it ended up being was less than half a penny per page read And they've also um, put in a new uh, thing on the Kindle called Page Flip, 
um, which is supposed to be a, a navigational tool to move you between pages in a book easier. Like if you want to go back and look at something, like reference it and then move back to where you were. Yeah. Um, there's no way to disable this. <clears throat> it comes automatically. Like when you when your Kindle updates, it's just going to be there. And so if, let's say you finish a book and you decide to go back to, I don't know, the dedication or something, just a random page that's way earlier than the beginning or the end of the book, you only get paid for where you last stopped. So even oh. if you finish the book, they're only going to pay you for two pages or three pages. Oh, that's just, that's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So by is. so by the same token, could I could I go ahead and get in this program, mm -hmm. and then flip to the last page? Yeah, um, you, you can, <laughs> but it'll it and then leave it there. <laughs> um, you can't do it using page flip. You can do it if you actually scroll through the pages. Like if you swipe through them one by one, it'll pay the author for the pages that you swiped through. Hmm. But if you just skip using page flip like if you're on page one and then you go to the the thing and choose page 300 or whatever it only pays for page one and 300 but backwards it'll only pay you for the page that you stopped at that's that seems like a flaw like an absolute flaw with the it's, with it's, the swiping does is there a time that you have to spend per page as well? Like, if I just got in there and started going to swipe, 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 are they going to pay you for every one regardless? Or is it like there's no way he read that, you know? They don't have a uh, a time limit yet on, yeah, they, they and I stress But I was going to say, it's something they'll definitely add. Yeah, if we start, yeah, if, if we start a coalition a, to abuse it, uh, you know, on behalf of the offers. <laughs> right. They've, got a, they've also got a thing now called, uh, I, I honestly can't remember what it's called, but it it calculates like how long on average it takes you to read a page um, mm. that's included with the Kindles now. And I think that's what they're eventually going to use that for. That's my suspicion. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can and see that. They're aware of the issue. Like when it, when it first became clear that this was going to be complete and total fuckery um, for like a hot minute, there, self-published authors actually got their shit together and all started calling Amazon repeatedly all day, every day to be like, what the fuck are you actually doing? Um, and they're completely aware of the issue, but they keep gaslighting us and saying, no, 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 everything's fine. It's not, you know, what whatever you're reporting is not actually happening, even though we have the data to prove that it is. And now they just won't answer our calls. This... This needs to be like on the news. Yeah, it it does. It absolutely does. You know, some inside but edition kind of thing, you know. The problem with self-published authors just as a whole as a community is that you know, the reason that they became indie authors more or less was to do their own thing. Yeah. So they have this aversion to organizing. And so Birding getting cats. them, yeah. you know, herding cats to get them to do anything about it uh, before they default to complacency of, well, at least we're getting paid something. You know, this is my dream and I'm okay with no motherfucker. Like some of us are making a living off of this. Like you should be able to make a living off of this. Uh, artists deserve to get fucking paid. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I think that's why it hasn't been a bigger story is because you know, yeah. they're fine with calling up Amazon by themselves to talk to a rep. But when it comes to like, all right, we all got to get together and, and pick a media outlet to try to get to pick this up. Um, everybody kind of goes, well, you know, maybe they'll come around or. No. So. Hmm. As as someone who's even worked within a union. And when your union reps are buddy buddy with a company, your voice doesn't get hurt. You have I, to yell. You have to scream. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. there's there's two methods to get a company the size of Amazon to listen. Mm -hmm. There's the media, and, and there's bosses. attorneys. Mm -hmm. Or affect sales, affect revenue. Yeah, but Those they, they seem to have their own, especially Amazon. They, do. they have their own so way big. of manipulating the, the currency. They're so fucking yeah. expansive, too, is the thing is that they... They came into the market and were like, we're going to pay you 70% royalties, which at the time was better than almost anybody. Um, 
And that's what they kind of used to to corner the market was like, hey, we have access to so many readers. We Mm -hmm. have our own e-reader that's, you know, outpacing the Nook by freaking leaps and bounds. Yeah, the Nook's dead. Yeah. And then once they kind of had, in in a lot of ways, weeded out the competition, that's when they instituted the Kindle Unlimited program. Um, And the more of the market share that they gain, the more they alter the program, and we just all have to pray that they don't alter the deal further. I was waiting for you to do that. Were you? Did I not disappoint? You did not disappoint, no. Excellent. Yes, Lord Vader. Uh, I mean, (laughs) Bezos. (laughs) Uh, Wow. Well, I you know I didn't expect to uh, to get such an in depth thing, but you see, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Netlandia, that is what you can expect from independent study when we interview people <laughs> about what they do. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Amber, for being our test subject. Uh, oh, and, you're welcome. Always, and, always up to be the guinea pig. I and suppose. Uh, honestly, I think that I need to get you in touch with uh, with a um, an entertainment lawyer. And uh, maybe they can get a class action together and make them stop. I mean, it, it may stop the program, which would then, you know, be a solution in and of itself. You're mm-hmm. probably not going to get any money out of a class action because you know, no one ever does. But if they stop the program, then that's that's yeah, what you might get it. a couple hundred bucks. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. 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 Enough for a taco yeah, Bell, I think taco it'd be a gift card for Amazon. Yeah, I think in the long run, <laughs> the money isn't isn't the the benefit. The benefit yeah. is if they can get things back to being, you know, at least a fair, marketable wage for the work that they're doing and, yeah. and the right, content they're providing. Authors. Yeah, yeah. So so again, I'll, I'll fly so now. Uh, they, I'll get you in touch. Very with short uh, fun fact at the end of this: mm-hmm. I actually got blocked by Hugh Howie over this issue because he's. Um, very close to Amazon now, and he was saying that all this would never happen and that we should just, you know, that especially he said that romance and erotica authors did not deserve to be getting paid what they were paid anyway. Like, he literally said that. Uh, and I asked him yeah. on Twitter, would you still feel this way? Would you still enroll in the program if you were publishing your Wool series now? Because those were, like, novella length. And that's all I asked him. Um and because he had just said that short form work didn't deserve to be, you know, making thousands when he made millions, and he blocked me, and that was the end of that. It's amazing uh, when you bring up democracy to people. Wow. Mm-hmm. Again, that that makes no sense to me. Again, short form has been the lifeblood of of fiction and discourse throughout the history mm-hmm. of publishing. Absolutely, and it's hard to write short form. It really is. Is very difficult to cull your word count. Well, I mean, that's part of the reason why I fell in love with Sherlock Holmes. Uh, as a yeah. kid, getting a hold of those short stories, stuff that was published in the Strand, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and falling in love that way, and then going to the novels. But I mean, um, you're you're talking about so many authors who have made a living that way. I mean, you're talking about, uh, like you said, the the. Um, Sherlock Holmes stories. You're talking about a lot of Edgar Allan Poe stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, again, short forms also where a lot of people start. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it's just getting that that little bit across. Also, horror. How mm-hmm. much of horror is short form? Absolutely, absolutely. And not only that, but like if you want to shit on erotica and romance, that's fine. But when people are buying it, when people when it's a product that that people want. You know, yeah. why should we get punished for writing to yeah. market? It's in why? demand. I mean, it's, it's a it's a standard capitalist trope: supply and demand. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, there is if, demand. If we're willing will to buy the supply. It, I'm willing to make it. Let's yeah. go. Mm-hmm. And, and no, capitalism. there's a there's a market for all that, and it, it has always been a market for smut. Always a a a, yeah. a a specific value. And I mean, hell, back in the the day that. You were able to pull some significant cash if you were a notable author of erotica. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. it, it, it was something that, no, this was your job. You could make a living, a good living, upper middle class living mm-hmm. off of this. Certainly. Yeah. I mean, it still is. You just now have to, it's like volume. I said, three novels a month, that kind of thing. And we're talking about novels that have an average length of, length of a 
65,000 to 75,000 words. So three of those a month to pull in oh my enough God. to live off of. I, I can't even fathom that level of production. Because you have to take into account stuff like advertising as well. We're responsible for that. We pay oh, those fees. Heads. But I'm glad that we made it full circle back to fucking dinosaurs. Literal fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got there. Uh, yeah. Wow. That's, um... Huh. So, yeah. so uh, you know, in trying to monetize work, because the podcasts are, are not free. You know, that they, they are given for free, but... It is not free to produce. It is not free to uh, to host. You know, all the equipment you know costs money. Uh, you know, our our time is is put in here, and of course, uh, you know, whatever we spent on our educations is also put into our heads, and that's you know flowing out of our uh, face orifices. <laughs> so you know that these things, uh, there are resources behind a podcast as well. And, you know, any creative endeavor has resources that are being deployed to it. And that there is a cost to those. So trying to monetize these things is hard. Mm -hmm. Trying to get any sort of, uh, you know, uh, repayment in any way is is a difficult uh, procedure. I have not yet mastered it. I've got like maybe four or five patrons, that's all. Um, and that could change at any time. You know, mostly they're, they're friends and family. So that's... Yeah, honestly, if if you sign up as a patron, you will be my friend. Okay, <laughs> if you need a friend, I I will tie that pork chop around your around your neck, and I will be your friend. You know, so that that's how you do that. Go to uh, you know Patreon dot com p a t r e o n dot com slash O'Reilly Radio, and you can be my friend too. Um, <clears throat> but with that, uh, I'm wondering because it, it's the Patreon platform is designed for content creators to yes. crowdsource their money. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be a patron of the arts, you know, as it were, by doing so. And the, the platform itself has grown by leaps and bounds. It's become insanely popular. There are, oh, I, I can think of at least 10 different podcasts, you know, groups that are actually making their living now based on Patreon income. Oh, I, I can already name, like, two rather disparate uh, professions and individuals that, no, their livelihood is Patreon. Yeah. Uh, Jim Sterling with uh, his podcast and the, and the Jim Inquisition. Mm -hmm. That's all Patreon. Yeah. Um, and then you have a number of cosplayers out there that are now actually doing full full-time cosplay because of Patreon. Yeah. And of course, there's the gamers, the streamers, you know, the yes. the, the YouTube stars that, you know, though you YouTube, <laughs> there would be a whole other discussion talking about publishing and being a YouTube, you know, celebrity, um, because YouTube has changed their content creation rules oh, as well, oh, yeah. and, and all their mm -hmm. their repayments. So How really, can we screw over the content creators. Yeah, there it is. Well, it's. It's not how can we screw over the content creators. It's how can we maximize <laughs> revenue. It's a little bit. No, they it, they don't deliberately want to shoot themselves in the foot. Because without the content creators, they have no content to push. So they do need you. There's an awful lot of them out there. And, some, and in some cases, they have made deals with content creators that were very popular to maintain the platform through certain transitions. And then of course there were certain other shakeups and those content creators left and, you know, it was all sorts of weird there. There's, there's a large, um, large following of those, uh, kerfuffles. But with, with this, um, you know, it's, I want to get out to people that this is an important thing because these platforms are unreliable. That's, that's really the, the crux of it you know whether it be amazon whether it be apple whether it be youtube vimeo you know any of the um any of the platforms that are willing to do a revenue sharing you know thing it is beyond your control to a certain degree and they can change the change the deal whenever they see fit 
And you're free to leave, but if that's where your income is coming from, you're not free to leave. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing of saying, well, just go get another job. You know, you, you can't get a job there. Well, why don't mm-hmm. you just move to another state? Well, I can't move to another state because I'm tied here. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's things that that tie us to certain platforms, certain places, and, and you know, that's life, and people need to understand that. So, Well, again, it, it, to, to bring it back to our, our usual discussions, mm-hmm. um, it's going to that person who has worked in coal their entire life yeah. and going – just go and get another job. Yeah. That's not what they want to hear. No. It is, unfortunately, what they will have to do. Yeah. But unless they can somehow get maybe a Patreon account for mining coal. That's a weird idea. <laughs> it's not outside the realm of possibility, though. Because no. then we'll have uh, bespoke coal. You know, <laughs> you know, very rare. You know, it's going to be you know mined and, and refined in just the right way. You know, I, I, I my hipster sense is tingling. There's an option for that. I'm telling you. <laughs> and, and all those steampunk people, yeah, exactly, steampunk hipsters, <laughs> yeah. buying bespoke coal. Oh, uh, no, no, no. To to have it's like okay for the for the cosplayers they will send them the costume and they will go down and they will mine in it for a couple days and then they will bring it back and it will be authentically distressed. <laughs> I'll be authentically distressed. <laughs> Everyone will be. Yeah, um, that kind of thing. You know, uh, you know. Just just think. I'm just thinking of you, Pennsylvania. I'm just thinking of you. You know. Um, Kentucky, yeah, the, West Virginia, all those coal states. Yeah, you have you're a large thoughts. number of family that are still in coal mining. That oh, might God, be you're, you're actually thinking this. of it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem saying that as much as a liberal as oh, I am, as much as I want everybody to be taken care of, I, I'm at a point in my life where I am a hardcore capitalist, and I go, <laughs> hey, if I can make money at this <laughs> and it not destroy people's lives, yeah. it might make them better. Uh, a, yeah, I'll exploit the crap out of that. It's a it's a strange idea that I came up with there, but you know, but sometimes you have People to think outside the it. you have to think I'm outside the box. So, um, but just thinking outside the box, support your artist, support your podcast, even if it's not this podcast. Though, of course, you should support this podcast, uh, just like all the other podcasts. Um, if there is a Patreon account, you know, send them some money. You know, every little bit helps. It really does. And if Absolutely. you have a lot of listeners, you know, get more listeners. You know, give them, you know, five cents a, a show or something like that. That does it add up. up. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, half yeah. a cent per page. Subscribe I mean, come on. Yeah, it does add up. But, you know. so Yeah. Help the Patreon. Yeah. If it's somebody that you enjoy, pay them for their time. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. yeah, th- there are certain rewards and things like that. And, you know. You are then a customer of of that person, and you can ask them things. Mm-hmm. You know that is also a way to engage the artist directly. You know you've already got their attention by giving them money, so you know go ahead ask a question. Um, Amber, do you have a do you have a Patreon? Uh, I I no longer do. I did at one point, but I no longer do because I um I I couldn't make. To be honest, I just I wasn't able to make the commitments to uh, backer levels um, uh, due to some personal issues. I understand. Perhaps one day again, Perhaps. but at the moment, no. Perhaps one day again. I know that uh, trying to figure out what the backer rewards are is a hard thing. It is. Um, just it's like, that's... what can I do for you? You know, it's like, give me a tip. You know, that's that's basically kind of what uh, I want. Um, th- that's that's one of the things I can actually help people with. Um, is is coming up with those little, little well things? You know what? I need help. Okay, I need help. So so help. Yeah, help I'm me. the chip on that, Daniel. Yeah, no, that that's uh, because of just in being steeped in the realm of Kickstarter and having a number mm-hmm. of of artists, uh, associates, friends who use Patreon. It's through exposure. Okay. I I know how to. Distribute that out. Well, dude, I will give you my login. You just make make some things happen for me, okay? How about okay. that? You know, that'll, that'll be your contribution to the show. You know, in addition, of course, sure. to, to your your large brain, you know, bringing interesting real world events into clarity for us. Um, 
And uh, I, th- I think that that should wrap up. Uh, we, we could just wrap the show here entirely. But there are a few little things that we probably ought to talk about. So we'll just uh, we'll wrap real quick and we'll get into a couple news items uh, that we have to get off our chest. <laughs> so with that, thank you all for being here. And uh, 2017, look for things to come. It'll, it'll be uh, it's going to be fun. Lots of neat things. And if you have ideas for the shows, and you have ideas for backer rewards, and things that we can do for Patreon, and and things that we can do for you, and different show ideas, and all sorts of get your creative juices going, send them to us, Podcast at gmail.com. Send us a voicemail, 470-222-6759. We're we're open to this discussion. We want to engage you. Though we've also got the Facebook page, the Twitter. You know, I'm not really great at the Twitter, but you know, I'll get emails if you send me d- direct messages or mentions or anything like that. So, you know, send those along too and, and engage us. We'll we'll do whatever we can. And with that, we'll see you in the next episode.